Hello, I would like to discuss today what are Cartesian coordinate in biological tissue and how they are generated. So, coordinates are uh, well known in, uh, in schools as we learn uh, starting from the classical Euclidean coordinate. So you have here x axis, the x axis, the y axis. And if you know, if you want to know where a point is, you just have to give the x coordinate and the y coordinate. And why does it work? Because you assume that the, um, there is a graded, uh, pre uh, graded expression along each axis started with one, two, three, and so on. And so we assume this, and this allows us indeed to uh, define points. So we can do the same in different types of coordinates. So this is classical Cartesian. We can go here to polar coordinates where you need the distance r and the angle phi and theta to define the location of a point. You can continue if uh, you don't have necessarily um, a plan x and y, you can transport this coordinate into the surface of uh, um, a body which can have curvature. So this is here the generalized, which is called the Riemannian coordinate, where again you have you assume that you have this expressed graded um, of each labels x and y, and you can find the coordinate of a point. But so, and indeed it works. If you think about uh, GPS coordinates, uh, you can get a triangulation and uh, the satellites can localize uh, anything of interest. So what about us in a city? So there is the same notion that streets are organized and uh, there is a graded expression in terms of, the n of a number, as you can see here, um, in front of each doors, there is a number that allows uh, people to know where they are. And this example of New York City, where you can go to thousands and uh, you can ha also have more information about if you are east or west and so on. But we never, we can never imagine that the um, numbers are not uh, increasing or decreasing. We cannot imagine labeling a street with random numbers. And this is the principle of um, having coordinates. So coordinates require to generate a graded order. This is fundamental and very important. And now we would like to move from these to what happened in real life. So, for example, here is the piece of the brain, and uh, you have here the axon of a neuron. And these axons can generate a trajectory, starting here in red, it moves in blue, and then in a yellow region, and so on. So, we are interested in how a neuron, finally there are billions of billions of neurons in the brain, and so they have to find some partners moving from one region to another. And how this is possible? So more than 50 uh, years ago and more, people started to understand that you need a notion of coordinates. So how this neuron will interpret the coordinates and find ultimately their, their uh, final position. So how biological tissue generates such ensemble of different coordinates here um, labeled by these different colors. So the first thing is that you can generate coordinates by generating gradients. That is, you generate molecules um, at some place and by diffusion this molecule is going to decay. And there is more in this process, and we will see that in the next uh, uh, video, that you have these graded expressions that generate naturally a gradient. And it is well known that if you um, look into the system of retina tectum, retina is the piece of the brain that we have at the end, at the, at the back of our um, eye, 
and there is a temporal and nasal orientation. And temporal neurons are going to project in the interior of the tectum, while nasal neurons are going to project to the posterior of the tectum. So there is a process by which the cell is able to sense the gradient and to uh, move according to this gradient. So this is an example where you see here um, a cell and in this um, sonic jog expression in a gradient, you see after some times that the axon here in black is going to turn to this direction. And morphogenesis gradient guide the development of axon um, probably due to uh, specific processes and receptors that are at the tip, at the very end of the, um, the axons. And through processes that are yet uh, not fully understood, they, can, they are able to sense the gradient, that is some information, has to be transformed from an external concentration to an internal concentration that keeps memories of um, what is happening and probably um, by calculating somehow the difference of, of uh, uh, fluxes and concentration of what happened here at the different tip of the gross cone, a process that is uh, yet to be understood. So I wanted to show you this uh, uh, movie uh, recorded um, more than 15 years ago where you see the uh, motion of the axons in here, let me do the movie again. Uh, you have uh, uh, neurons where the axons are formed and the dendrites here are more, much less stable that are sensing their, um, the, the space around them. So how neuron, in general, how neuron can find, uh, how they find their, their correct path and what are the possibility for deregulation? So here I showed you um, two very classical examples where you have neuron from the thalamus that has to project to the cortex and go through this corridor. And they have to be um, expressed. They go through uh, this uh, region where some morphogen are expressed in a gradient. And if these are removed, as we can see here in this uh, picture, that is if the coordinates are missing, then instead of going to the right path, the neurons are actually going through a completely different path that could lead to some um, of uh, some uh, non-correct wiring of the brain. And here is another uh, example from different parts of the thalamus. If here the netrin in green and slit in one are expressed correctly, then you see that a neuron project in using this um, a schematic representation in green and, uh, um, and, uh, and violet. But if there is not any more this graded expression, then the two types of neurons are intermingling, leading again to a wrong wiring of the brain. Yeah, this is more or less the same representation where I showed here this uh, graded expression. So the conclusion is that gradients uh, can be com combined and cell knows where they are according to this gradient so they can uh, generate correct paths for the correct brain wiring. And again, this is an example of nasal axons. So, um, the, the, the arrow here indicates the location of the, of the gradient, and you see the nasal axon turn to right this direction, while the temporal axon, they go in the opposite direction. So confirming that a graded expression can guide neurons. And more than guiding, coordinates are important to make borders between regions of the brain and so again, this is works of Ollery and colleagues, which have shown that if um, we have a correct expressions of um, MX2 uh, or, uh, or, or the wild types, and if you remove MX2 or if you increase 
uh, says what you have here is a visual cortex. Instead of being very well localized, it can be in one case um, the region is completely diminished, and the other case it is uh, completely it's it's um, taking over over all these uh, regions, and this can have consequences as sh as shown in the literature. So coordinating the brain not only important for guidance but also to generate a specific, uh, the, the, to give the size of um, the regions of the brain. And so how to make border, we'll have a specific uh, a lecture on this, but the idea is that some molecule generating one cell can contaminate literally um, the neighboring cells and so on. However, if there is uh, an opposite uh, molecule that can go with the same um, with, with the same process of contaminating a cell. At some point, they will define a border by interacting at this uh, specific location. And so you can ask, how comes um, a graded expression is possible compared to the case where we have one source because each cell is represent a source. So the, one hypothesis is that by passing a, um, a membrane and maybe by other um, uh, uh, possible mechanism, then the next expression is going to be lower than the first one, so leading to a gradient. But I will have a specific class on this. So again, this is to show that uh, you can make borders. This is an example uh, taken from uh, uh, the Prussian lab. Um, many years ago. So the boundary between the midbrain and the hindbrain here is marked here by this arrow. If you remove one of these uh, uh, cues and morphogen or the X2, you can have a shift in the boundary in one direction. However, if uh, uh, you can also change this uh, morphogen expression so that the boundary is going to be expressed and pushed in the other direction, so showing that you have here interaction between these two morphogens through this uh, expression of the cell that can possibly interact to generate a very specific um, location of the boundary. So we have been interested for many years toward finding the principle and making simulation of neuronal path. So you have here an example where we started a simulation somewhere where we have a, a, a given expression for the gradient. This is in collaboration with uh, uh, Ulrich uh, Drobashmil from um, Oxford in Cambridge. And now if you increase the expression, you see that suddenly the path is more direct. And so we are uh, still very much interested, and this is ongoing work, is to find the, the, some principles by which a cell finds uh, a source and knows where it is actually located inside the tissue. So from coordinates to full wiring, the brain is wired and uh, it's still unclear how the coding is generated so that you have all of this gradient at the different places that ultimately result in neuron that can travel centimeters from their initial destination to their final destination so they can make contacts with uh, other neurons. So in the next step, I'll explain how gradients uh, are generated. This is a model we started and developed uh, about 10 years ago. And then I'll move on to triangulation sensing, which is uh, a possible mechanism by which a cell can read an external gradient and compute the position of the source um, similar to a, a cellular phone from the information that they have, we can triangulate where the person is located from antennas. Thanks for watching.